Yo, what's good, mi gente? You are now rocking with Pura Cultura Sin Censura, and this is your boy Lazy. And I'm Smiley. And together, we are the Maxi Twins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. We is back. And we got the homie. We got the homie rocking with us, man. We got hey. the homie. It was a kill on the podcast, man. What up? What up? Yo, yo thanks for having about me back, the, man. Yo, yo, bro, you are like one of the hardest workers out here, bro. We always see you yeah. grinding, we working, <laughs> staying active on social media, staying active doing shows, bro. We definitely wanted to have you back on, man, just yeah. to check in with you, what you've been up to, and all that good stuff, man. So welcome to the podcast, bro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for, for the kind words, bro. I, yes, sir. I, I try to do everything I can to make this dream, uh, you know, keep going. So, yeah. Bro, and you know, um, a lot of people that rock with the podcast, bro, they've they've met you through the pod. I'm not saying we're over here, you know, getting you all your fans or nothing like that. But, <laughs> but Lazy is responsible for uh, I made yeah, you. All, the, all your I success. Made you. <laughs> no, but a lot of people seen that performance that you did at the Latino Happy Hour um, live show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. let's just say I was ready for Ilza Kill to hop on the stage and do his thing. Yeah. I, t- I turned full fl- full blown fan, bro. Oh shit! Yeah, like, lazy turned into a groupie real nah, quick. Nah, I, had, nah, I, had, nah, I, nah. I had to remind him what the who the fuck we were for a minute, man. Like, yo, nah, lazy, nah. chill out, bro. <laughs> I was like, bro, you you rock that stage, bro. I appreciate real. it, man. That that's one thing that I pride myself on is the live performance, bro. Because it's one thing to listen to it on the headphones, but you know, I've I've uh, I've come across a lot of a lot of rappers, a lot of artists, like. I, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of rappers on stage. And, and that's one thing that separates the ones that get to the next level is, mm. you know, it's, it's a small percentage of dudes that can actually do it live. You yeah. know what I mean? So do you, do you gain experience, bro? Like by just performing on stage and doing more, more shows and more, you know, more shows and stuff, or do you like, do you ever like get, you know, in front of a mirror and just rap, bro, and, and do your thing? Like, is that is that part of the process? Uh, Yeah, man. Like, uh, I think rehearsing, practicing, it's just like it's just like this is a this is a profession. It's a skill set. So mm. I, I try to approach it in the same way as as like the dudes that inspire me in, in sports, like uh, biggest dude is like Kobe and, and those guys is like putting in the time to perfect your craft, no matter what it is that you do. You know what I mean? Mm. If you're, if you're a, if you're a welder or, or if you fucking fix cars or whatever you do, like you're only going to be as good as, as, as you like the amount of work that you put into it and you, and you like sharpen your sword, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, no, I take it. I take it real seriously. When I got a show coming up, at least I rehearse my set for at least two weeks, bro. So because oh shit! I, yeah, I want to be up there, really ripping every every verse, every bar. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you're about to step in the ring, man. You get into yeah. training mode. Yeah, bro, straight up. Like <laughs> you know, who who goes into the boxing ring without training? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, yeah. at the at the end of the day. Uh, you know, I do have shows where I'm headlining and people are there to see me and I feel it's, it's my responsibility to give them the best version of myself. You know what I'm saying? Because they pay money, they pay money for the ticket, you know, and, and they resonate with my music. I get a lot of messages from fans and they're like, yo, I fucking love your music, this and that, you know? So I want to be able to give them an experience that, that, they're going to be happy with they're going to go home and be like yo i saw it was a kill live and that shit was crazy you know what i mean like that's that that was me right there bro i was like <laughs> hey i heard that the one you performed that really like hit it yeah. was the like mother, motherfucker i'm ill no no that was that one too but the one that really got me bro was the uh, how can i kill a man with a mic in my hand like bro hey, yeah that was, that uh, one right kill there, him bro. that one's kill called him. kill him yeah yo you know what's funny bro like there, there's people that there was people that were there that all, were already fans of your music, bro. Yeah. But yeah. I think like that performance that you did at that show, like it solidified mm-hmm. them like even more as fans, bro. Like what when we saw what you did on that stage, and you just, you know, that was our 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 first event that we've ever done as a podcast, bro. And just to have you, you know, willing to be part of it, bro. We were like, I was we honored, ex- bro. Yeah. Yo, we were yeah. we were honored as well, man. We were excited yeah. as well. 
And like, we also felt like it's a good opportunity for both of us. Um, it's you're going to bring something dope for our show. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, we're going to put you in front of people that are can possibly be fans, which I, I, I can guarantee a lot of those people that we know there, they became fans. And it yeah, was like, that, it, it was some just of them still bro. hit me up. Sorry. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. No, but no, so no. There's, 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 you know, at least like 10, 15 people that were at mm. that show that for, since that night on, they, you know, they like every post, they be commenting, they, they reshare my shit. They'll, they'll drop me a DM like, yo, love this song or blah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, that's it's, what's up. It, it really was, uh, legendary night for sure bro bro, bro it was for, yeah. for everybody <laughs> I gotta, you guys gotta do that shit again i want to do, do it i know <laughs> do. but you know like there was like the dude that ran the that that um venue right he's like dude who is this like we like give me his information like he yeah. wanted to book you uh martin yeah. martin the comic um he was yeah, like yeah we talked we talked after the show like we we started we exchanged information and we you know we even talked on the phone and you yeah. know oh damn talked about possibly uh collaborating on some content no, nothing's happened yet but yeah it was yeah that like, that yeah that was that was a very very dope experience man yeah. i appreciate i appreciate I, you guys having me on that no no definitely bro and i think that you being prepared and and presenting yourself as a as you're that guy yeah. you that's what people believed it bro like me i like your <laughs> i like your music i rock with your music right but when yeah. i seen the performance i was like damn this vato he he's he got it you know what i'm saying so i definitely it, wanted man. to give you your 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 props and and flowers on that bro cuz to this day Thank i still you, listen to some of those tracks and it brings me back to that night you know that's dope. Yeah, the music is nostalgic, man. It, yeah. It's connected to memories and and all that. Another thing that that's helped me with the performance is I've toured. I've toured the U.S. coast to coast multiple times. I toured up in Canada. You know what I mean. And and as an opener, as an opener for other acts, so as like an unproven, unknown person. And it was my job to like warm up the crowd for the main act. But at the same time, that's my time to gain fans. So mm. I learned I learned how to interact with the crowd in a way to, you know, to grow my fan base. It, it was like my my uh, get like a college, I guess, you know, my learning, mm -hmm. my training to Your experience. Yep. Yeah. So and, and I did that for years. So, um, you know, do you it's, ever it's get nothing like it's nothing like rocking in front of a like I could practice. I could practice as much as possible, but until I get in front of that crowd, then you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a different yeah. thing. Have you ever, have you ever like got stuck on a, on a couple bars or lost your place because yeah. I don't know, maybe a little nervousness or anxiety kicks in out of nowhere. I don't know. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. How, it, happen like, what, it happens to everybody, bro. I've seen, yeah. I've seen, I've seen dudes at the top fumble a couple bars, you know, and, and I, it, you know, it's happened a handful of times to me over the years. I've done I've done hundreds of, of shows by now, but, you know, probably a handful of times. I One time was the worst. Uh, I can't even remember where it was. I want to say it was in, in Idaho somewhere. I fucking just straight up forgot. Like, I don't know what happened. I just drew a blank, bro. And I forgot <laughs> like I forgot like two bars. It, and I was just like, oh, shit, you know. But then yeah. I caught it. I caught it again and, and I could see the crowd. They're like, what's going on? But then I caught it again. And once I started rapping again, they they're like, okay, you know, like they, yeah. they short term memory loss. Like they, <laughs> they forgave me for the two bars. I missed because I, went, I went right back in with, with twice as much energy and saved it. You know what I mean? But. Yo, and that takes that takes some some mental strength, bro, because it's like yeah. to to know what's happening and to be and, and to fucking catch where you're at again and and come yeah. in with that energy, bro. Like and again, that's where experience kicks in, you know, like you got to right. you got to go through it so so you can know how to handle it whenever it goes through, because I'm sure it is happened to other people and they play it off in, in such a way that you won't even you won't even notice that that, that shit happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, I saw this thing with the uh, with the uh, iced tea and he was. He was doing an interview somewhere and he talked about how, you know, there's been many times where he where he fucking forgets a, a line or two and he just plays it off like, 
somebody in the crowd said something. And so he would like react to somebody in the crowd and then pick, <laughs> pick it right back up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and no, no one even notices, but uh, it happens to everybody. Like ice T is one of the pioneers, you know what I mean? And he's been yeah. doing it for 40 years or whatever. And even he, you yeah. know, What's nobody's called? perfect, bro. It's like, it's like every athlete misses shots or turns the ball over. You know what I mean? You know, that's facts, bro. You know, it's like, um, I'm saying like shit happens. Nobody's yeah, perfect. It, that's facts, man. And you know, like I think as when I, I think as you uh get into different spaces and, and you and you do certain, you know, different things, you start realizing like like oh shit, like if this shit takes practice, you know, and then and then you, mm -hmm. you think back like there's people that are on TV that you see bloopers, you see retakes, yeah. you see all this and that. And when mm -hmm. we see it, we just see the the final cut, you know what I mean? And we're like, right. man, these motherfuckers are good. You yeah. motherfuckers are professional, but we didn't, you know, they, they don't show, they don't show the bloopers. They don't show all the retakes. You know what I mean? So right. I, it gives us like a, 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 well, what's it called? Like a, a fake unrealistic, idea, yeah. unrealistic idea of, of what, how things really go, you know, but going back to your shows, man, I can, I can imagine that those type of reactions that we're talking that people had a, like, a, like a crazy reaction and like, just like amazed of, of what you just did on stage. I'm guessing mm -hmm. you get a lot of that. You know what I mean? Is that like something that like gives you that fire to keep going and, and, and keep working? 100%, bro. Like that, that is like a drug, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. and I know which songs do what, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. and, it, it's like, I have songs that are, you know, at least 90, 98% of the times that I perform these songs, they get similar reactions at every yeah. show that I go to, especially when I do like the bilingual and then I start double timing mm. in, in, in both languages. <clears throat> like, cause that's a skill that a lot of rappers, you know, they don't, they, at least they haven't perfected or they, they there's, I just don't know a lot of rappers like snow does it. You know what I'm saying? Like she can mm -hmm. double time rap in, in both languages uh, there might be a few other people, but there's there's not a whole lot, you know. So yeah. when I do that on stage, it it nine times out of ten, it's it it uh, electrifies the crowd. So uh, yeah. it when and when that happens, bro, it's like a surge of adrenaline goes right through my body every single time. <laughs> do you do you ever like do you ever like get, do you ever get in the zone and like just even just like black out? You don't even. Yeah, like look at anything. You're just in your own zone doing your just thing. floating, just floating on yeah. stage. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's, it, it's yeah, it's uh, it's actually called flow state. It, oh, really? It's, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's a scientific term for being in the zone. Mm. You you get into flow state and and it's like everything slows down. You know what I mean? I'll mm -hmm. be on stage and I'll be doing songs where where um, you know double time rapping super fast and when i'm in that state it feels like i'm rapping slow like time slows oh, down shit. so i'm so i'm able to hit every single word real precise and you know what i mean and emphasize oh. it the way i want to it's it, you yeah. go into like the 3d 4d dimension type <laughs> shit, bro, bro. <laughs> I, oh, shit. The fifth dimension bro <laughs> um, no that's yeah. just crazy bro so talking about snow i know you had recently or to me, it feels like recently you had done a show. Mm -hmm. uh, you opened up for Snow. How how was that? Because I'm sure that that crowd is to me. It, I have an idea that that's the same similar type of crowd that would like rock with your music. Like, did you yeah. did you have a do you have a good show on that? Do you get a good feedback off of that one? Oh yeah, that that show was incredible, bro. Like, like I I want to say that's the biggest crowd I ever rocked in front of. Because she's a she's a superstar, bro. Oh, like, yeah. she, she sells out shows in every city she goes to, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's, and it's anywhere from a thousand to 2000, 2,500 people at her, in her crowds. And it, you know, the crowds that I'm used to is, is a hundred, 200, 300, 400 people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. some, some nights even 50 people or something like that, but it's just a whole different level of energy, man. You know? Um, and the just everything is just exaggerated times 10, you know, the <laughs> energy, everything. And, and, you know, her crowd is basically my, my demographic. So, right. You know, um, obviously in front of Latino crowds, I'm going to do, I'm going to, my, 
like my pers- my tur- my what's what's the word like my conversion rate is a lot higher when it's a Latino crowd. You know what I can I'm just saying? imagine you wake up, you wake up the next day, like all these followers on social media. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Like, yeah, that's exactly Muffle. what happens, bro. Gonzalez, <laughs> Lopez, Fernandez. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but, but snow has a lot of, snow has a lot of white fans. And I, I'm, I, yeah. I also see some of your um, audience that you also get like a lot of white fans too, you know? So yeah. Yep. I, I think that that's a good that that's a good show, bro. When I seen that you was gonna do you was gonna do a show or open up for her, I was like, that's a good move. Like, I don't know who worked that in. I'm like, but that's that's dope that that home is gonna be in that situation because mm-hmm. it's gonna be nothing but but good stuff coming out of that. You know, what I mean, did um did by any chance you get to uh, chop it up with Snow and and possibly link up in the future? She's a she's a very busy woman, bro. It's like uh, she's going a hundred miles an hour. So for me. I, you know, I barely even got a chance to say hi because her, mm. her her tour manager was keeping her like locked in and moving, you know, her tour yeah. manager is the one that I was, that I was communicating with. Okay. Um, she's the one that reached out to me and, and offered me the show. Uh, it was actually uh, snow put a post out on her social medias and she was asking her fans like who, who they would want to open for her in, in certain cities. Mm. And like, a few hundred of my fans responded and tagged me. So <laughs> yeah, so like her manager reached out immediately. So what's and, that was, and that's was, that's was that Vegas? Yeah. That was in Reno. Reno. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's when that's when you um that's when your fans and like for people that are listening, like that's when you realize how important the fans really are. Like you can actually oh, yeah. help your the person that you're supporting, the rapper that you're supporting, you can actually help them by just reposting by sharing by tagging and all that it really it does all make matters. a difference yeah, yeah it all matters man a lot because so yeah at the end of the day like the fans are the ones that are that are pushing your numbers up period like you can only like like we we make our music we put our heart and soul into it but if nobody's listening to it and sharing it like it's what's the fuck you know like it's it could be a form of therapy the fans are the mm-hmm. ones that drive your entire career yeah point blank you know what's it called how how are you um how are you doing your music these days bro because i know times have changed like the whole putting out an album and and just pushing it as a whole complete project i feel like that's the that's the days of the past you know i think nowadays is people want singles because everyone wants everybody wants something new and fresh every other week you know what i mean um and I just kind of want to have an idea, bro. Have you changed the the way you you're you're pushing your music or you're you're coming out with music or albums? I've actually, you know, I was last year. I was uh, last year. I dropped an album in February, and then after that, I was putting singles out for like once a month for like six months straight. You know, um, but since I, I I haven't dropped a song since December, I believe. So it's been a it's been a few months. <laughs> And I, I do have, I do have like 20 tracks locked and loaded. And that's where I'm sitting is I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do because me, I'm a, like, I grew up in the, in the nineties era of hip hop where you would, you would get an album and you would enjoy it start to finish. So that's the way that I like to consume music. So that's Mm -hmm. still kind of the way that I'm creating it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I want people to play the album start to finish like it's a fucking movie, you know, so they can experience right. the whole ride. But at the same time, I'm in a I'm in a place where it's like you do have to adapt with the with the times and and do what works for for business purposes, right? And at the end of the day, this is a business and this is how I, you know, I make money and and I pay my bills and feed my kids. So it's one of those things that you know, I got to decide what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you, you know, like being in this business, you have to keep an eye out or you have to be aware of what other artists are doing and what's working mm-hmm. for them. Right. So right. are you, are you like on that? Like you kind of stay on, stay up on game of like, Oh shit. Like this little trend or this style yeah. is working for this artist. Maybe I should give it a shot or, or. Yeah. Yeah. On that? Yeah. I mean, to a, to a certain extent you know i always want to i always want to do i want to 
I want to do what's right for me at the end of the day. Yeah. But I do, I do study people that are successful, like in the game right now. And, and I do implement some, some tactics that they use and, you know, do similar things. Um, like one dude, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, this rapper, uh, Chris Webby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I heard of him. So he does this thing when he releases an album, it's, uh, it's I guess he <clears> called it like Webby Wednesdays or something like that. Okay. So that's, that's how he markets his album is he'll drop a track every Wednesday for like a couple months. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and then he'll drop it all together as, as a unit somehow you know so yeah. at the end of the day all those singles that he dropped say he dropped 10 singles out of a 20 track album it's already accumulated millions of streams so by the time he drops mm. it it charts all the way to number one every time you know what i mean oh shit yeah. i um i remember um papoose uh remy remy martin's husband he did something like that too where he was dropping yeah. something every friday but you know mm. just recently i i caught a clip of um of russ i'm sure you know who russ is yeah. Um. And he and he was talking about how he started realizing how the game is changing and how pe how people are consuming the music, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I believe this was when SoundCloud was still a big thing. I was never I never listened to music through SoundCloud, so I'm very like don't know yeah. what's up over there. But he started realizing that people would listen to like the first track and second track, and then the the rest wouldn't get nothing, right? Yeah. So what he started realizing is like, man, I'm gonna just drop one song like every I, I forgot when like every week or every month or something like that and just let mm. people know about me and once right. they know about me i drop this album on them and yeah. and and they're they're going to be ready to really fuck with the whole thing i thought that was i thought that was pretty genius bro the way he yeah. put it the way he put it and i was like damn like me and lazy we 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 always been talking about that like man people kind of got to change the way they're putting the music out right um because it's like it's so hard bro like i've had people like literally like like right you know, give me a CD or they'll send, they'll send us full CDs and stuff. And like, yeah. if I know, if I know them, I'll, I'll rock with it. You know, I'll listen to yeah. it. But if I don't know them, bro, it's, it, bro, it's sad to say, bro, it's hard to even open yeah. up a CD and, <laughs> put, and listen to yeah. it, bro. Like, honestly, I don't even know where to listen to it, bro. Like, you know what my, I mean? But it's my like, vehicle, my vehicle don't even have a CD player anymore. That's, man. that's yeah. what I'm saying. You know? So it's like, yeah. it's, it's, it's so hard to actually pop, you know, you have to like, work you know what i mean you have to actually yeah. put in some work to to listen to the cd yeah. bro so it's like yeah. you got to make it easy on people you got to make it um digital it's and... the fast food era of everything bro yeah everybody wants instant gratification they they want everything now like you know like, so like not the only attention do you need spans it... are slow like the attention spans are so short now so yeah like... and not only do you have to like make it digital you have to like share it and you have to put the link on there for the people bro yeah. because it's like people it's hard it's hard yeah. to fucking somehow transition them to another app without you just saying click here and they'll take you straight over there you know what i mean so, yeah there's like there's like nine billion people on the planet and eight billion but eight billion of them are music artists you know what i'm saying so, like, <laughs> <laughs> so there is so much so much and not only that like you know tiktok and fucking Bro, there's so much content now. It's like people people will only give you 10 seconds of their time because they've got yeah. like 10,000 people they're following that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, crazy. and, you know, I feel like these days, you know, back in the days, like um, company owners of the record labels, they used to, you know, push their artists through record, I mean, through um, radio stations and basically pay them to keep playing that song. Um, now I feel like they're getting into like Spotify and shit, bro. Playlists. Playlists, bro. Because yeah. they, they, they throw you on this popular playlist. Mm -hmm. Bro, you know how much garbage there is in some of these playlists, bro? But they get played so much, their name starts becoming like a... If you're if you're a hip-hop fan, name. it yeah. becomes mm -hmm. a household name. You don't yeah. like their music, but you know of this person. That gives them value for one way or another. They're a valuable artist now. Because they're yeah. known now, and and you know people, uh, again on social media, <laughs> is gonna come to this club since it's a known name. It's gonna be like, hey, so and so is gonna be here. That club's gonna be popping. It's not even about that artist is gonna be popping. It's like, bro, the party's at boom, boom, boom. You know, so I do right. feel like 
artists that don't have that record label push, um, you know, you have to work harder, bro. You know what I mean? And and that's what's giving you your your yeah. grit. But I think um right. you're definitely doper than a lot of you know people that are on these mainstream playlists and shit. Yeah, I appreciate that. I I really do. Um, you know, it's I guess. I don't even know, man. It's different, different styles. I, I don't feel like I fit in with most of what is being pushed on those platforms at the end of the day, you know, yeah. it's apples and oranges. Yeah. My style, yeah. Is, my style is different than most of the mainstream shit. And it's crazy. I mean? <laughs> it's crazy how the mainstream shit, bro. It's like, they don't frown upon like songs talking about popping these pills that are killing thousands of people you know what i mean yeah. and i don't want to get too deep into that but it's like they're promoting all this music bro you know what i mean they won't promote no positivity shit so i feel it's like it's in one way it's it's like uh <laughs> it's just like mass mental genocide bro you know what i'm saying like it's uh it's hard to find uh content that is pushing some type of positivity or or uh uplifting of of you know self-growth self-worth anything mm. like that it's all negative it's all negative energy and yeah. you know what i'm saying even most of the things that are being pushed in 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 our demographic too you know what mm. i'm saying in the latino in the mexican chicano world mm -hmm. it's all gang violence and and yeah it's Oh, ratchet, ratchetness, yeah. uh, drama sells, bro. Like not only, <laughs> not only yeah. in music, you know, like let's say some rappers are going at it. Everyone's yeah. on their pages. Everyone's in the comments. Everyone's, you know, throwing more gas yeah. in the flame. Right. Same, same in the podcast game, bro. Like yeah. people that are talking the most wildest, reckless, ratchet shit yeah. is what's yep. getting the most views, the most attention, the, the, the most support, the more engagement. And then it, sometimes it feels like, damn, like, I'm trying to I'm I'm just trying to out here to promote like the real the real shit because I'm not trying to act, like promote something that I don't live because that's like I'm not right. down with being fake like that. You know, so it's like I'm going I'm to keep it righteous. I'm going to stay on my lane. Yeah. And, you know, sooner or later, this is, you know, this is going to be successful because I'm going to stay true to myself, at, you know, to the end. You know, what I mean, but yeah. it's like if I'm if I'm just going to join that that side because it's <clears throat> excuse me, because it's just getting a lot of views, getting a lot of attention. It's like, that's just being, <clears throat> excuse me, that's being fake with myself and being fake with, with the audience. Cause it's like, it's so, so easy, bro. Like I, I tell, I tell like lazy, I tell other people, bro. I'm like, you know how easy it is. It would be to jump on a podcast, bro. And talk so reckless and talk some wild shit and, and drop right. names and, and be like, yo, this person, this, and this person said that about that. You know how much yeah. like, like following and and uh, viral little clips we can make. Yeah, off if we of that? if we if we did that shit right now in a week, we'd mm -hmm. all fucking blow up. Yeah, if we started exactly. naming names of the bigger people in our demographic and in a negative way and calling mm -hmm. them out and shit, like, first of all, that'd be fake of us to do that because we we yeah. we're not about that shit. But yeah, it would definitely all the other podcasts would be posting it on their pages. Yeah, and mm -hmm. every platform would be posting it on their pages. Did you hear hear what Ilza Kill and Pura Cultura said about this rapper? Mm -hmm. blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just at the end of the day, man, like I grew up in in um, in a very toxic, a very detrimental environment myself. I come from generations of of fucking, you know, traumatic, dark fucking bullshit, you know, for generation after generation, like my great grandparents were murdered. My my grandmother was was uh, abused, like physically abused by by her, you know, ex husband. My mother never even met. She's never even seen a picture of her father. Like it's just generational trauma, as far back as I can as I can look. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, my focus in life is is to try and break as many cycles that have been put on me. So you know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I don't find anything pleasant about, you know, being, being stuck in your own mental, personal hell uh, of negativity, bro. Like right. people don't realize how, how much they're damaging themselves by, you know, 
vibrating at such a low vi vibration at such such a low frequency and yeah. feeding into the negativity you know what i'm saying once you start realizing um once you start healing from all your traumas and and seeing life from a different perspective it's almost like uh it's almost like people that are that are living in a negative reality like they're hypnotized by it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and, they, and they don't even know it they don't even know it yeah. you know what i'm I, saying i think um yeah. i think people that cuz you know we could all fall you know victims to that drama and the cheese man all that stuff mm -hmm. but i think it's a it's a form of feeling better about yourself it's a form of like hey yeah. i'm not the only one that fucked up look at that person or like that person's right. fucked up more fucked up than i am because yeah. um i remember that show like intervention bro and i you know i was like young and wild and then clubbing every weekend you know yeah. blacking out and shit doing stupid shit right yeah. but then i would watch you know and then i would watch that show intervention and then um <laughs> my bad you kind of froze up a second um then i would watch that yeah, show intervention please. And I would be like, man, I ain't that bad, bro. Cause look at them motherfuckers. Like they ain't yeah. got a job. <laughs> they living in somebody's basement. You know what I mean? So it would be a form of me being like, it's your easy way out, bro. Yeah. Like to fuck. Yeah. That's yeah. You, you. Yeah. That's how you justify your, your fucking behavior, bro. Yeah. I started drinking at the age of 14. I started uh, smoking weed at 11. I started smoking cigarettes at 12 and I carried that on uh, into my thirties. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't go more than two weeks without getting fucking drunk off my ass from the age of 14 uh, until my mid thirties, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, um, I quit drinking uh, during the pandemic mm. in 2020. Um, I, I, I went a solid two years without, a single drop of alcohol and it fucking awakened me to so much shit that hmm. over all those years I was numbing and, and basically clouding my mind to so much shit, bro. And, and yeah. once I had that clarity of mind, it, it changed my life. You know what I'm saying? And it took, it took a long time for the clarity to come back because that's how, that's how much we don't realize that, that uh these type of things really fucking affect our mind and our in our consciousness you know what i'm yeah. saying but i'm you know, not you know i don't look down on people that 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 drink alcohol i still have a beer from time to time at you know dinner or before a performance because it takes the edge off a little bit you know mm, yeah. yeah i just i just made it a conscious decision to like not get fucked up anymore i don't get drunk <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you know what i'm saying you know i do i, I do smoke weed you know but i feel like <laughs> weed weed heightens my senses and it elevates me to a, to a point where I'm like fully fucking conscious of everything. You know oh, okay. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think to myself sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could be that 17 year old me again. You know, that dude that didn't drink, that didn't, yeah. there was nothing altering my decisions or mm -hmm. nothing, bro. You know what I mean? And no cares. In no the world. cares. You know, it's like zero fucks. And I was always <laughs> like, I, I was always just like on point, you know, my thoughts yeah. and my decisions were me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Now that ever since I started drinking, bro, it's like, you know, I love this shit, bro. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like bad day. Fuck it, man. I'm gonna go grab myself have a, a beer. six pack. A, a dope, <laughs> a dope, dope day. Oh man. Like, let's go get yeah. that drink, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I'm, I'm working to get towards a, you know, uh, a better, you know, cause I've definitely nowhere near the way that I used to be, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely want to work it down even more to, to be a yeah. casual drinker, not like, yeah. uh, not even a social drinker, you know, cause social, I'm, yeah. I'm always socializing even, even right now I'm having a beer socializing with you, bro. Yeah. It's all good, <laughs> it's all good bro. I did, I did it for a lot of years. Sometimes I actually miss it, you know, for the aspects that you're talking about, but for me, bro, like like I told you, bro, I come from a long line of fucking alcoholics, drug addicts, fucking, you know, just people involved in all the wrong things. Like my grandmother had 12 kids. Five of them were males. Four of them were drug addict alcoholics. Uh, my my father is in rehab right now. My biological father, he's almost 70 and he's in rehab because he's just fucking, you know 
uh, my, my, it just goes back generation from generation, bro. So for me, yeah. it's, a, it's, a it's, it's a demon for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah. so, so, uh, it's just healthier for me to stay the <clears throat> fuck away from it. And I'm, it, it's better for my, my music. I feel like ever since, uh, I quit drinking, my music career has catapulted 10 times faster than what, where it was when I was a heavy drinker, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then qu quitting, quitting the, the nicotine, the cigarettes is it's improved my health. You know what I'm saying? Um, and did you quit cold? Did you like just quit on your own? Like cold turkey yeah. on cigarettes and alcohol? Yep. Yep. It was, uh, I got to the point during the pandemic where I was like, I was getting out of control again. Cause when I was in my early twenties, bro, I would drink so much. I had this fucking, I had this job at this fucking mortgage office and I didn't have to be to work until like 11 AM. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Reno, Nevada, which is like fucking heavy party town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, casinos, clubs, everything. And I was 20 years old, 1920. <laughs> I had a fake ID. <laughs> so I was going to the, I was literally going to the clubs five days, five nights a week, bro. Holy shit. And I was blacking out most of those nights. And I <laughs> did, I did that for like a year and a half straight. And it finally caught up to me. I fucking totaled my vehicle, mm. drunk off my ass, blacked out and fucking woke up in the drunk tank, you know, finally came to out of the, out of the blackout in the drunk tank. You know, I got arrested and fucking, so you got a, you got a DUI. I got a, yeah, I got a, I got a Dewey before it was like a week before my 21st birthday, man. Off of, Ooh. yeah, they charged me with a fake ID too. Damn. To, how, how, that, many that's DUIs, you, how many DUIs? How many DUIs did you have in your in your lifetime? Just that one, bro. Just that Just one. That. Yeah, I, I think the the three of us here, man. We all we only have one, one each, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. I that was that was a like a wake up call for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, damn, yeah. I'm. I'm out of control. Like looking back at it now, I was like, I was really blacking out drunk fucking four or five nights a week. Yeah. Every yeah. week. For it's a funny year. how it's funny how you <laughs> it's funny how you look you look back at it now, bro. It's like it's funny, like when you're living it, it's like you don't see the dangers and you don't see like the 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 possibility of you dying off of this shit, not just getting it. Yeah. Like all I used to worry back then excuse me, was getting a DUI, bro. But now I sometimes I think back, I'm like, man, I'm glad like I didn't kill myself. You know, there's so many times where you don't remember how you got home or you I were almost drunk. Did, yeah. You know, what I mean? almost I almost died doing stupid shit so many times in my youth, bro. Like, yeah, you looking know, and back, I'm just like, damn, bro. Like there really was an angel like protecting me because I wasn't protecting myself at all, bro. Like I was yeah. doing the wildest bro, shit like you know? like people that that know people that black out or they blacked out themselves you don't know how vulnerable you put yourself in a situation bro you know especially right. if you're if you're out there and then you decide to talk shit bro like you could get really you get your fucked ass up, bro. yeah because you, mm -hmm. you you're you're sloppy yeah you're funk you're not functioning bro like yeah. you, you you can't even stand up straight how are you gonna fight somebody <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, one thing that helped me, like, um, you know, helped me change, it, it took a while, bro. And I'm, I'm not this dude that is like, you learn from your mistake. That happened one time, never again. You know, I, yeah. I'm not that guy, bro. Yeah. But the I don't know if you went through it, but, like, there's a next day, like, coming down, like, depression of some sort or guilt. 100%. Yeah. And it's like, it's so deep, you know what I mean? And it's like, you can't figure out what can make you feel better. And right, man, I hated that shit, bro. Yeah, it, it, I don't know if it ever happened to you, but you wake up the next day and you got like text messages, like you're a fucking asshole. Like you blacked out <laughs> drunk. You said you did some stupid ass shit that wasn't even you, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you're blacked yeah. out. Yeah. And <clears throat> all of a sudden your homies are pissed off at you because you did something that you don't even know. And you got to like apologize for some shit that you don't even remember. You know oh, what I'm saying? That's like, facts, yeah. bro. Those, those are yeah. definitely, you just brought some fucking flashbacks right there. <laughs> it, it's funny because they, they, they always say like, you know, los, dicen que los borrachos dicen la, la verdad, you know, los borrachos y los niños dicen la verdad. And then you're like, no, there's, a, there's a difference between being drunk and tipsy. Yeah. And yeah. being fucking blacked out like that, that person is, 
is like fucking yeah. on autopilot. You know what I mean? So, autopilot for real. You know, they like they call in certain cultures, they call alcohol spirits, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. That's why they call and it a, spirits even here. Yeah, they, spirits, they, yeah. they believe they believe that uh, the alcohol. It uh, it basically like loosens the 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 attachment of your own soul to your body. Damn. And it and it gives other spirits an opening because you're vul- vulnerable. It gives them an opening to take over. So if you're oh, blacked shit. out, that probably ain't even you. You know, you probably under something control of something else. I don't know if you believe in that, but yeah, you I know, like believe in that. I no, do bro, too. Have, so have you? I you know now that you say that, you know, because we we grew up in church and stuff. So there's mm-hmm. always that thing where it's like if you're not in your senses. And mm-hmm. all your senses and like if you're drunk or even high, like you open yourself, you open your mind up and you open your body up for like bad spirits. Right. Yeah. But talking about that, have you ever um, have you ever been asleep and, and experienced that what they call que se te sube el muerto? Have you ever experienced that? Uh, do you even know what that is? No. What is that? What is that? Like, do you ever heard of like that Michael. sleep sleep paralysis? Oh Have yeah, you? I've had that. I've had. Okay, that so in in, in in Spanish, like Mexicans, what they call it is "se te subió el muerto." Se te subió el muerto. Because it's like it 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 gets on top of you, and it's like yeah. you're frozen. You can't move. Yeah. All you can do is open your eyes, and you're like yeah. trying to like yell and scream for someone to come help you. And I've been there many times, out. dog. I've been there many <laughs> times, bro. In 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 my old house, I. I can think of one time specifically I was uh, I was laying down. I was asleep. It was like 3 a.m., which is they call it the devil's hour or whatever. 3 (laughs) a.m. Right. (laughs) Um, I don't know if you've heard that, but yes. um, Makes sense. Anything anything after midnight is a devil's hour. (laughs) (laughs) I I was facing the closet. Right. And then I thought I was dreaming. And then I saw this shadow come towards me. And I like same thing. I couldn't I couldn't fucking yell. I couldn't scream. I was trying to yell at it to get the fuck out. And yeah. it fucking walked and looked at me. And then it went right towards my daughter's room and it went in a room. And I like oh, at that amazing. point, I at that point, I was finally able to wake the fuck up. I jump up out of bed. I ran towards the room. I start looking everywhere. Nothing's there. Right. Mm. No, mom is way. I call my mom the next day. I'm like, mom, this shit happened. She's like, mijo, tienes que hacer una limpia. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, bro. I would have done the same thing. So I'm over there doing some. She's teaching me how to do a limpia and all this shit, bro. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Putting the holy oil on the walls and shit. <laughs> yeah, aquí está un, un pinche cucuy entró a mi casa. You know what I'm saying? Freak. <laughs> bro, that I've, shit I've is never, creepy, way. Uh, yeah. I've never dealt with that. Um, but I know Smiley has, I know, bro, I've, bro, it, I've, I, I, I usually experience them like once every, like at least once a year, bro, once, six mm-hmm. months, once, a, once a year, mm-hmm. but bro, like during the pandemic, and I think it has some related to with, with the alcohol, bro. Like, I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to say the alcohol is a devil out here. And, and all, bro, <laughs> but, like during the pandemic way, like, I ain't going to lie, bro. We was, I was drinking like every single night way, like they we weren't doing shit but being home all day right but yeah anyways i swear bro for like two weeks straight every time i went to sleep that shit would happen to me it would happen to me when i took a nap and it would happen to me when i would go to sleep for the night bro Damn. and you it's like a, you had a you had a spirit there fucking with you for sure bro Damn. for sure bro like I, you know that's like, just scary I bro because I, I i tell <laughs> my girl like because normally like I said, it would happen like once a year, right? And I'd be like, oh, fuck, like here. Because you can feel like a bad, you can feel this bad energy, bro, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but usually it happens when I'm like in, in deep sleep, you know? Like never in a nap, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was the weird part during the during that, that time, that two-week period, that yeah. even if I took like a, a half-hour nap, bro, that shit would happen to me, bro. Mm-hmm. And it got to the point where it was like, you just dealt with it, you know. I'm just like I wasn't even like fighting it as much because I was like, all right, this is gonna take a couple minutes and then it's gone. And mm-hmm. like all, all I would do, <clears throat> excuse me, all I would do is I would just start praying in my head, praying, praying, praying for mm-hmm. this bad spirit to, to to leave, right? And then it would go away, you know. You start, you start saying all that stuff. My mom would tell me to say like, in nombre de yeah. Jesus, reprendo, yeah. and all that stuff. And then, yeah. and then, bro, like it works, bro. Like it works. I, 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 a, lot, a lot of people, a lot of people sure. might might be like, "Man, you you're tripping," you know. But yeah. bro, 
as soon as I say, you know, all that stuff, Jesus Christ, bro, that thing just leaves, yeah. bro. Mm -hmm. And then, like, sometimes it happened to me, like, it, it leaves and then it starts trying to creep back, bro. And you start feeling that energy and you start, I start praying again, bro, and it, it's gone, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, man, it, it, that stuff is pretty scary, man. And, yeah. and uh, like, what they, what people try to say, they, they label it sleep paralysis, right? Mm hmm but I feel like it's deeper than just like uh, this, I don't know, this like scientific reasoning for your body reacting a certain way. Like, I yeah. feel like it has to do something with like bad spirits, bro. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. some people might think I'm crazy, but yeah, I, I believe in that shit. You know, that I'm, shit, that shit happens to me. Not that, that, that sleep paralysis, as far as I'm up, like your eyes are open and you can, you just can't move. That's never happened to me. But like me after like, a weekend of heavy drinking, especially if blackouts were involved, bro. Every time I would blackout, the, you know, here comes Sunday night or Monday night, the days where I'm starting to sober up. Bad nightmares, bro. I'm talking about, yeah. I would, I would have like so many times that has happened, bro. Like I would, I would get like, you know, them exorcist movies. I've never watched them, but I've seen clips of them. Like when you're floating, bro, like I would straight up <laughs> see my body getting. <laughs> Like getting slammed across the walls, bro. No, yeah. 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 The, the, de the demons was having their way. That's the lazy, bro. That they was double. They was double teaming lazy too. And then, and then I would, I would, um, I would have like the, double team. I would have like the fucking devil just sitting on my headboard, bro, mm. just like looking down at me, dude. Hell no, nah, bro. bro. What the and, fuck. And I would tell my girl, I was like, I would try to scream, bro, because I was like. I guess the only difference is I wouldn't open my eyes. I was like, I knew it was like, I knew something was going on, but I couldn't move and I couldn't open my eyes. Right. I was kind of like mm -hmm. in the middle of sleeping and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I would try to scream, bro. And then like, sometimes I would get through and then my girl would like wake me up and shit. Yeah. Um, but bro, like, yeah, I've dealt with I've that. Had, I've dealt with that. I've had some, I've had similar, similar situations when, when I was drinking a lot too, bro. I remember having a nightmare one time and it was like these two demons and they look like demons that they put on like sci-fi movies and shit, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> actual fucking devils and shit. And they, <laughs> they, like I was in a Pantheon, I was in a, a cemetery in the dream and they was like holding me down. Like, like, and, and then there was two of them, one on each arm and they was like holding me. And then another one had like this big ass ax and he just kept swinging it back and forth right in front of my face. And he just kept getting closer and closer. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like fucking screaming and shit in my dream. And then and then uh, my lady at the time was like, she woke me up. She's like, dude, you're like fucking whining and crying and screaming <laughs> while you're sleeping. I got kids. I was like, Fuck, I couldn't even move, man. These fucking giant ass demons was about to chop my face off. Like <laughs> and then and then well, the that was day, after a heavy night of drinking you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah same with me bro and then Nightmares, the next day bro. the next day you're at the supermarket like nothing like you wasn't about to get <laughs> killed in your sleep and shit yeah yeah <laughs> it was seriously like a, a scene in a in a fucking horror movie you know what i'm saying like straight yeah. up just like that man scary the, shit bro <laughs> <laughs> nah man that shit that's just scary man let's let's stop talking about that because i'm in my basement here man. <laughs> 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 nah, man, but get getting back to this music man like um so what what kind of stuff you got going on right now man you staying pretty booked up on on shows or or uh, actually you just been, making I music right now I've actually been pretty low key the last like since December, but uh, I just booked a show coming up uh, Cinco de Mayo. I'm going to be going to to uh, Twin Falls and doing a show with a bunch of my homies out there. We're calling the show uh, Illis, Illis de Mayo. OK, mm. I'm going to be headlining that up there. Um, and then I'm playing uh, I'm playing a summer festival in Boise, Idaho. Everything else, man. Um. I just kind of been working on music. I've got like 20 tracks in the vault right now that I'm waiting to put out mm -hmm. uh, that I'm like perfecting, fine tuning. Um, I had a I had a great week this last week. I had a little spurt of like two, three days where I just it's like a, four songs just fucking came out of me, bro. Like I Damn. just. Oh, really? I, I wrote 
recorded, mixed, and mastered a song in under an hour, bro. And and it's not, you know, like a lot of people say, like, oh, when you rush shit, it's like less quality. Nah, bro. Like I feel like that song right there is one of the best songs I've ever done. So oh damn. Yeah, it's just like sometimes it's, it's like I don't know what it is. Like you tap into something or you know, like a like a memory or a stream of thought that you've had for a long time. And then all of a sudden your, your mind just knows how to express it, you know, at any given moment, like that you were never able to express before, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, it's just like, that's <clears throat> like those magical moments when you're creating. I, I remember I... hearing, this, no, go ahead. Uh, sorry. I, I remember hearing this interview with DMX and he was talking about when he made that, the rough riders anthem classic yeah classic but when he described how he did it is uh like he said that he literally wrote the song and recorded it in 15 minutes and it's oh, like damn. one of one of his biggest songs of all time yeah you know? so it's a vibe sometimes that shit happens yeah, yeah. once you get in yeah. that vibe it's like i need to put this on record you know what i mean so yeah. that, that's dope that's dope what's yeah. the what's the longest you've ever had like well first of all have you ever had like writer's block and if you have like what's the longest you ever had that i had a writer's block uh last year and it was like five months bro damn. oh damn bro like even in podcasting bro like there's times where it's like there's not a lot going on and then mm -hmm. we gotta we gotta just come up with something off the top of the head and just create conversation out of out of the out of the blue right yeah. um but there's times where it's like, damn, like there's nothing, there's nothing <laughs> there. You know what I mean? Like, but we, mm -hmm. but, but it's like, what, what do you do to, to get yourself out of that, man? Like, do you go out more? Do you go hang out with certain friends? Do you listen to certain music? Do you watch certain movies? Like, what do you do to get kind of snap yourself back into that zone? I, I've come to realize like for myself, when I have had writer's block, I'm either, I'm either going through something in my life that is, is taking uh my energy you know like um your focus yeah it's taking the focus away where i can't because i've i last year you know uh one of my childhood homies passed away and then um you know okay. just just certain certain things happened in my life that affected me in a in a like my emotional and mental state negative in a negative way mm -hmm. and I just couldn't write. And anytime that I would sit down to write something, I would get emotional and I couldn't mm. think of words or nothing. That shit went on for like five months. And I realized that it's like when you get into those states, it's either it's either for me, it's either one of two things. It's either I have to process what I just lived through, whatever type of little like crisis or whatever that I've gone through, because everybody goes through shit, bro. Nobody goes through life without bumps and bruises, you know, right. Um, even when you think that you're coasting through life, like you're, you know, some shit's going on inside internally for most people. Um, but it, it's either that, you know, I just got to process it enough to where I can understand it and figure out a way to express it. Or I just have to live more because there's been times and mm -hmm. there's been times where I have writer's block and, and I just fuck, man, I've put out 140 songs already, you know, Mm -hmm. as a solo artist and then i put it out like another 60 songs back when i used to be part of a little rap group you know so when you put out that much material it's like you, what the fuck what the fuck do i talk about now you know so, <laughs> i those, said it all i rhymed yeah. every single word already. <laughs> yeah. so in those in those times it's like you just i just gotta fucking live my life and go through you know go fucking live some more shit to talk yeah. about you know ha have you ever have you ever wrote a song and then felt like man this is too personal i don't want to put it out there like yeah you 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 feel like it's it's just too personal like people are going to know too much about your life like do you yeah, have I, some of that yeah i got i got several of those that are tucked away hmm. um i actually just wrote a verse yesterday and I'm like, fuck, I can't put that shit out. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, yeah. It's you get to, do you feel like you get too vulnerable in it or, or what is it? Kind of, you know, I, I don't mind getting vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I don't mind getting vulnerable. And, and I think 
vulnerable songs are important. Um, like the way that I view being an artist is like it's helping me heal heal myself and mm. like deal with with things and in turn i've i've realized that it it helps other people like my fans that listen to it it helps them uh like get through shit that they're going through relate yeah. everybody's going through shit like and a lot of people are going through a lot of similar things you know mm -hmm. so so me going through certain things in my childhood I talk about it. It's like therapy for me. It helps me understand it and and deal with those things and 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 gain a new perspective about it. And then in turn, you know, it ended up being medicine for somebody else too. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. That's the shit that that music used to do for me when I was growing up too. Like I would, I really resonated with Tupac's music because, uh, you know, even though we that you know I'm not a black kid growing up in in oakland and in baltimore and shit like he did and his mom was a black panther and all these things but there's a lot of things that that he went through as a child or as an adolescent in his life that are very similar to things situations that i grew up in like mm. i i explained to you you know my family history like what i come mm -hmm. from he comes from very similar traumatic situations so when he would do songs like like uh, I think uh, he had a song called Papa's Song where he's talking about his dad bouncing. His dad was a fucking drug dealer, fucking, uh, you know, so he stayed away to be basically because he didn't want to bring his family into that. Like I lived like that's a similar situation mm. with me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, I forgot what the fucking question was. I just, no, so no, I just <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not scared of, of yeah. being vulnerable, You're you know, but. No, um, but there's there's certain things that I you know that are I like to keep private, but just a few things here and yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? I got a question though. Is like, do you ever? Because even as as podcasting, you know, and Smiley used to be a Chicano rapper, so he kind of knows. He might he might know about. I this. was I used to be the king of Chicano rap. <laughs> I, I passed what the I crown mean? around. I passed the crown around right now. They're they're uh, playing hot potato with it, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So we're not gonna get Elsa Kill involved in that. You know? really, we want to keep the homeboy neutral. neutral yeah, yeah. Um, I stay new. I stay neutral, bro. But one thing I will say is that I, 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 I'm very. I have confidence in my skill set. Yeah, mm -hmm. I might, I might not uh, have the the fan base other dudes have, and I definitely don't talk about shit that other dudes talk about. But when mm -hmm. it comes to rhyme skills, like I, I fear nobody in the game. You know oh, what I'm I like that. That's what's up. But what I what I was gonna ask though, um, do you ever like when you're in the studio or when you're in your zone or about to create, do you ever think about like the future? Like I'm gonna leave all this for my kids to always go back to and kind of remember you, right? Do you ever think yeah. that? Yeah, man. Definitely. Um I've even gone so far as to like, this is going to be weird, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, there's, when you pass, there's different things that you can do. Like some people get cremated, some people get whatever. I saw this thing, bro, where they could turn you into a vinyl record. Oh, oh damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> well, what's what's going to come out of this vinyl record when they put the needle on you, bro? Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, make me a vinyl record and put my best songs on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that would be dope. And then my kids yeah. could have that. Like, oh, look, here, here's my dad. Let's play him right now. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if I would do that, but That's no. Is that, is, that, is that true though is that real? yeah i saw i saw that somewhere i don't know if it's true but i saw it on the fucking internet <laughs> you know, that, that is that i gotta admit that is kind of weird bro but yeah at least you're not gonna be like them i don't know if you ever saw one of them um that post where like in central america the the the, the cholos down in central america i don't even want to say their barrios and stuff but They'll make themselves a rug out of themselves, bro. Have you seen that? What? I have not seen that, bro. They like skin them because they, you know how they, they they're all the tatted. No, they're all bro, tatted that's, up. That's even weirder than a fucking record, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I seen like, I seen someone someone post that up, and I was like, this can't be real, bro. But some people say it's real. real that's like that. Know, Jeep, right? Have you seen that movie Jeepers Creepers where he makes like a quilt out of the the fucking people's skins and shit? Uh uh. 
Oh, yeah, man. something like that, yeah. though. Something but, you like know, that. but like what Lazy's saying is true, man. Like um, your kids will always have your music. Not not even not even when you pass, bro. But even when, like, let's say you're 60 years old, you know, they'll be like, man, my dad was cool, man. My dad was, you know, he's, <laughs> my dad was a cool ass dad, you know. And like yeah. they, they, they'll they know things about you because of the way you put it on music right. where sometimes, it, excuse me, like it's hard to have those conversations. But by them listening to your music, they know exactly where you're coming from and where your mind was at, where your heart was yeah. at. And, you know, like that's something when we can relate to in the podcast game, you know, and that's that kind of goes back to keeping it real with ourselves and keeping it real with who we really are, because it's like I don't want my kids to ever go back and be like, man, my dad was being fake right there because. Right. How dare he be telling these people to live that way and act that way and act so ratchet on his podcast when he didn't even right. let us listen to rap music at home. He didn't yeah. even let us watch the fucking, um, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, well, hell yeah. Hell no, we didn't watch the Kardashians. <laughs> like, he didn't even let us watch, like, fucking, like, all kinds, like, music videos. You know, like, I yeah. I, I got to keep it real with my with, with people, man. I, I'm, yeah. My house is very G-rated, man. Like, I, I, I make sure that I really kind of, like, protect my kids and just um, make sure that they enjoy their youth. You know what I mean? Like, in yeah. this day and age that we're living, man, they, they want to push – so much upon these kids, bro, that they're not even getting a, an opportunity to enjoy what it truly is just to play with the girls to play with their or kids to play with their dolls and and right. boys to play with their toys and and all yeah. that. But like nowadays, it's like you got little kids doing um, you got kids doing questionable uh, viral videos on TikTok, um, yeah, dancing yeah. to certain music, singing certain rap lyrics. And it's like, nah, man, that ain't going to be my kids, man. Like. As, as like you got to I guess, you know, you got to protect your home. You know, I mean, that's that's the job of a dad, like you, the job of a dad um, or as a parent is like to protect your family, protect your kids and just make sure that everything goes as a, at, at his I own like, time, at, yeah. at his proper timing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's that. like that's that's one thing that is like um, it just goes back to how just just being real with myself because I never want to feel fake. Like I never want to my kids be like, "Yo, Dad, listen to one of your podcasts from back in the day," and then I, I'm there talking a bunch of fake shit Reckless. that I never was. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like, like you know, me. I had all the was... bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, you know, me. You know that was all a front. You know, it was just for the for the listeners. Nah, man, I yeah. can't. I can't do that, man. But um, talking about that, like, how how do you feel right now, bro? Like, um. Just where the music's at, and just kind of switching away from that, man. Like, what what do you think about all this music that's coming out of Mexico, man? Like, I feel like Mexican rap right now, like they are kind of like taking the torch, bro. Like, I feel like, oh yeah, um, like for a while, like Mexican rappers used to look upon what the Latinos was doing on this side of the border to to do their right. music, but now it's like they just took the torch and now they leading the way, bro. Like, how how who are you listening to on that side and? And 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 what do you think about that whole movement, man? I fucking love it, man. Um, Santa Fe Clan killing yes, the game. Hera yeah. MX killing the game. Uh, I fuck with with Darius. Uh, most of them, bro. Um, I heard you're a big fan of El Babo recently. <laughs> <laughs> I know Smiley is. <laughs> Smiley went back to the 1993 album. That's how much of a fan he became. <laughs> nah, bro. I, I I I support I support the the movement in in Mexico. Uh, Asesino, the battle rapper, the world champion of 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 Latin battle rap, is from yeah. Mexico. Uh, Mexicans got a stronghold on the game right now, and I'm f I'm all for it, bro. I I love it. Um, oh, man. It, it and when I when I first started discovering discovering these guys, I, I was truly mind blown, and it gave me like a sense of pride. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. like for for them to, especially to hear um, the rappers in Mexico rap the way that they do, because it's very different than the than the right. out here. They they you know the 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 Spanish in Mexico is is on a, on another level than our Spanish yeah. out here, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like we do our best. Level. Yeah, we do our best to fucking to keep our roots and and continue to speak our 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 uh you know our first language. Yeah. But 
they live it, bro, every day. Like we we yeah. out here speaking English, so we lose a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those motherfuckers speak Spanish on like level <laughs> five thousand. You know. So, <laughs> so I love uh, listening to it because it helps me sharpen up my mind back into that shit. You know. So yeah. Uh, when I hear when I would hear Kid Frost drop a one word in Spanish, I'd be like, damn, that's dope. You know, little Rob dropping sometimes yeah. a few words because because yeah. you're you're right. Spanish was not very common that even when our top artists would drop a, a Spanish word, we'd be like, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Even if they mispronounced the word, man, we'd be like, man, he, he tried, man. At least he tried, <laughs> man. <laughs> Representation matters, bro. I don't give a fuck yeah. what nobody says. Those dudes, right. uh, it, whatever level that they were speaking Spanish in, I still believe it was important for us to hear it. And because yeah. it's just like I saw a video today of, uh, I can't remember the kid's name, but uh, I posted it on my story on IG and it, it, it's this uh, Mexican American basketball player who plays for U, uh, UCLA mm -hmm. and, it, and, and the video is talking about how they like, there's, where have you seen a fucking Latino or especially a Mexican bro in the league? There's only been a couple, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, um, uh, you know, this kid from U UCLA is, is is inspiring a whole generation of kids to to go for basketball, you know, because yeah. We're, yeah. we're not represented in the NBA. We're not represented in the NCAA very much. So um, yeah. representation matters because if you don't see somebody out there doing something, it might not inspire you to go that route. You know what I'm saying? What, mm -hmm. like, I, I always use Kid Frost as an example, bro, because when I was a little kid, rolling around in my little bike in, in, in Reno, Nevada, when I was like seven, eight years old, the first time I heard La Raza, I was fucking mind blown. And I instantly, I still remember where I was when I heard that song for the first mm. time. And I still remember thinking, I want to do that when I grow up. I want to oh. represent for Mexicans when I grow up and, and make rap music like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and yeah. then, you know, fast forward, to present time and i and i'm working with with the guy you know what i'm saying yeah. so salute man salute you made that happen bro representation matters though like yeah. seeing him inspired me you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. I, I i already had the 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 urge to do music but seeing him was like it brought it to a whole different level because he he represented me you know what i'm saying so, like in a, yeah. in a way so yeah um, what do you think about this this new wave, man? Corridos tumbados, bro. It seems like it seems like um they created their own hip hop culture within the corridos. You know what I mean? Because if yeah. you look at them, they're all chains, their chains, their diamonds, their their yeah. um shiesty mask and all that stuff. What do you think about that um genre? Uh, it's not it's not a genre that I personally like listen to. But I do see uh, like masses of people, masses of people love, love it. Honestly, bro, the, the way that I look at it is, uh, you know, they're, they're in, they're representing and, and they're being, they're successful. They're inspiring more people to, 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 you know, step out of the comfort zone and, and go for bigger dreams and shit. So mm -hmm. I'm all for it, bro. It's not for me. It's not my cup of tea. Yeah. But but I think it's important for anybody who's doing something that's out of the box that can get you out of the fucking matrix of the nine to five grind every single day. Or, you know, and, and I'm not talking I'm not talking down on 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 any of that any people that choose to go that route. I was in that. I was in that world. But um most people have dreams and aspirations. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. But somewhere along the line, society and, and reality, money, bills, fucking life. It just the momentum of that just carries sweeps, sweeps you into that life that, you know, most people end up working a job that they they don't fucking want to be there. They're just there because they got to fucking pay the rent and keep the lights on. Yeah. Right. Mean, meanwhile, they wanted to fucking do something else with their life. They wanted to be an actor. They wanted to be a painter. They wanted to fucking be a businessman or something, but they never really, they never really thought it was possible. You know what I'm saying? So they just yeah. 
stayed where they're at. But and you know, and these, you you these becoming... kids are making shit happen. So yeah. 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 And talking about the business side of things, um, how did you find your your um your situation? Like how do you how do you make it work? Did you read up on a bunch of shit or did you have a mentor that kind of coached you on how to move to to be able to be independent? Everything that I've done, I've I've learned it on my own, bro. Um, okay. I've had, you know, conversations with, with elders in the game where they gave, you know, they shine some light on some things that I didn't know that's helped me along the way. So I, I actually, I can't say that everything that I've, that I've done, I, I learned on my own. I, I have learned some things from people, but most shit, bro, like YouTube university or just <laughs> reading up on Google, you know what I'm saying? All the information is out there for anybody to make anything happen. It, uh, it's all about someone just having the patience and the grit and the fucking grind and the and the dedication and the passion and the fire to fucking go chase it and actually put the work in, bro. Because facts. being a rapper, it's not an easy thing to do. And it requires a lot of fucking work. And especially if you're independent and you're doing it by yourself, you have to put on so many different hats, bro. You know what I'm saying is like to release one song, you got to have cover art. You got to get it mixed and master. You got to get an engineer to record it. You got, you know what I'm saying? Like there's 10 fucking steps before the song even hits Spotify. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of people want that instant gratification. And that's why, that's why like only 1% of people who are in the music business actually make shit happen is because it requires mm. so much motherfucking work, bro. You know mm, what I'm right. saying? If, you got to do so much. You got to set up your fucking YouTube and and then get it into being an official artist page. And there's so many things on the back end required for you to actually make this shit a profession that people have no idea. Um, there is like point point zero like point zero 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 one percent of people uh, get lucky and they put fucking a song out on SoundCloud and it fucking goes viral and then they're on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's like a one in a billion. But most everybody else grinded at this shit for 10 fucking straight years before they became an overnight success. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, and that I think that's what separates um, a lot of people, bro, and, and everything in life. And I know you rap and we do podcasts, so we're going to use those examples. But it's like there's a lot of rappers, bro, that are talented out here. Like there's there's rappers that drop a song a year. And I'm like, if you only did like if you only did that like every two months or three months, <clears throat> you would be a lot more popular and a lot more successful. Yeah. <clears throat> but people just think that they can drop one song and, and disappear for a year and think that their fans are just going to be waiting for them to drop yeah. something else. It's like, nah, you gotta, you gotta keep, you know, you gotta keep dropping it, music. You gotta keep feeding it, not just yeah. on music, but we're living in a day and age where social media is a big thing. Like, you got to be up in front of, of, of your public put it. You need to be doing um, social media content, like engaging with your, with your fans and your followers. You know what I mean? So that's one thing. So like, there's a lot of talented people that just don't have the discipline and the, and just, yeah, just the discipline to, to, to do that. Same in the podcast game, bro. It's like, there's a lot of people that are always like, for example, they'll be like, you guys need to talk more about this or you guys need to do more of this. You guys need to stop focusing so much on this. And mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, go start your own podcast, bro. If you don't like yeah. what we, if you don't like us talking about certain stuff and you yeah. want us to focus on some, why don't you start your own podcast and you talk about exactly what you want to talk about? Yeah. But it's so, it's so easy to, to, to be, you know, giving recommendations to somebody to do it instead of yeah. you going and doing some yourself, you know, it's, it's not, it's not easy work. It, it takes, uh, it takes a few, it, it takes a, a special type of people right. or a hardworking type of people that really want it, that, that just keep getting it every week, every week. Um, and it's like, that's what separates, a lot. that's what separates a lot of people, bro. Like there's a lot of talented people that if they just had more discipline, they would be, yeah. man, in yeah. a whole different situation. Because, um, yeah. you know, we've dealt with like, you know, Raza is really bad with time management you know what i mean but for the for this podcast we have made it happen to when when it needs to be done you're gonna figure it out you know what i mean oh we can't record this day so we're gonna move it to this day boom 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 
But a lot of people, bro, one thing that they're not going to know that I'm sure you know of is you're going to miss certain things. You know, you're not going to be able to make it to all the carne asadas. You're not going to be able to, you know, like right now we could be doing any fucking thing else. You know what I mean? But we're right here having a dope conversation, going to release some content that somebody's going to listen to for an hour and then they're going to go about their business. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of work to things though. So like, bro, like, um, like let the let the people know, man. We're gonna be dropping this in, in probably like in a week and a half or so. Okay. Like, you got any shows coming up? You got any projects coming up that you want to let the people know about? So right now, uh, the only show I I got booked is well, I got two shows booked. I got the one in Twin Falls, Idaho, for Cinco de Mayo, the illest de Mayo show. Uh, I will be posting flyers and all the information up there really really soon. So. Keep it locked on my social media accounts at Ilza Kill, I L L Z A K I E L. Uh, it's basically where I post everything. I got merch on ilzakill.com. I put a lot of my information up there too. Uh, although I haven't, I haven't fucking updated that website in a little bit. I got to get to that too. See, there's so much to this fucking business, but yeah. Uh, and uh, just, just uh, keep your eyes out because i do have a lot of music that i'm getting ready to start releasing um j i just haven't put official dates on anything but it, it, okay. new, new, new music is coming soon for that's sure. what's up man yeah. i can't wait yeah, yeah hey, give, give us a heads up on that one you uh, created in an hour man i want to see i want to <laughs> see which one that one was man bro i actually i i do this shit a lot of times too is when I'm so happy with something I'll put out like I did put out a little sneak peek little snippet of a verse okay uh I think I put that out yesterday uh but it's on my it's on my fucking Facebook and Instagram right now if you, if anybody okay. wants to peep it bros that's what's up so, hey you got crazy you, so going crazy okay do you have a TikTok I do have a TikTok although I'm not very active on there which I I know I, I need to be, uh, it's just, you know, I'm a one man show. So, uh, this, I know. feel you, I feel you, but <laughs> it's just the same, just... the same handle at it was a kill. I L L Z A K I E L. Yeah. I no, I, 10,000 followers over there. Sorry, man. At, at, it was a kill. No, my bad. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to post up all your, all, all your tags and stuff, but I do, I do want to let you know, man, like TikTok is a place where, I see a lot of rappers now barely moving into that space. You know, we mm -hmm. we ourselves as podcasters are barely moving into that space, bro. And it's a whole different thing. You know what I mean? It's a oh, yeah. whole different type of algorithm. You yep. put up a post, it can get a hundred to five hundred thousand views. The next day you put up a post, it'll get five hundred views. You know what I mean? It's yep. just very fucking. Um, well, what do you call that? In a, uh, oh, I can't even think of the word. Like you can't expect what what what's gonna okay. happen with it. You know? Unpredictable. You know what I mean? Unpredi unpredictable. Very unpredictable. Yeah. You know. So, but I do recommend, bro, that that you do put your music on there, especially the way you do your music, the videos that you do in front of the mic. I yeah. feel like that's that's okay. very good um, TikTok material, bro. So, um, yeah. definitely get started up there, man, because all it takes is certain influencers to to feel the vibe and want to create yeah. something out of your song bro and next thing you know mm -hmm. you, you know you're gonna go viral on tiktok and that's yeah. that's its own world of itself bro you know what i mean i myself I mean, have have seen videos and, and they make videos so fucking catchy and, and funny or whatever that yeah. i'll see the song and then i'll go look for it on spotify and then i'll add it to my to a playlist. Yeah. so that's how important that shit is you know what i mean yeah well, if you look oh, at man. Dogface, bro, he went viral riding a skateboard, drinking ocean spray. <laughs> and now he's created an entire fucking successful career and living off of that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's that's... been on he's been on like TV shows. He's dude, he's rocking hip hop shows. He's doing all kinds of shit, man. Yeah. No, and that's just an example. We gotta believe in ourselves. <laughs> Hell yeah! Anything is possible. I I was rocking that song. <laughs> oh man, um, thanks for thanks for definitely coming back, bro. Rocking with us. This conversation just made me feel like, man, we gotta have the homie on a little more often. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, it, so, was, it was dope convo, bro. I appreciate you guys having me on here every uh, time, bro. Let's do it uh, more often. For yeah, sure. let's do it more often, man. And um. 
Yo, thanks for rocking with us. Um, you know, all the people that's checking us out right now, listening to us right now, make sure you go check out Ill's a Kill, man. Hey. This is your boy Lazy, and I'm checking out. Yo, Smiley checking out. Peace out, y'all. Thanks for having me. Peace.